but how do I really review my questions? And this is where the color coding system for Active Recall comes in. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Now previously I have talked about how Active Recall or active testing and distributed practice are two of the most rewarding strategies for studying according to evidence. And this is primarily because these two techniques require that you actively process the information that you are trying to learn and hence consolidating your memory much be in a much better way compared to other passive techniques such as rereading or simply taking notes and highlighting material. I started using these two techniques towards the end of my second year and not only did my exam performance improve drastically but I was also able to save and free a lot of my time without sacrificing the quality of my learning. Now there are so many different ways of incorporating these two uh, techniques into your own study regimes. For example, doing flashcards, solving problems, answering questions at the end of your textbook chapters or like by doing past paper questions etc. However, in this video I will be sharing with you guys how I personally like to incorporate these two methods into my own study regime. I will be giving you guys an in-depth analysis of the so-called the color coding system for active recall which is a system or method that I have personally devised in order to suit my own needs and you guys can obviously adjust and modify this um, to suit yours. As you wish. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into this video. Now I'll break down this video into three parts. The first thing I will be talking to you guys about is how I make or write down questions from lectures and textbooks. The second thing I will be talking to you guys about is why I do not take any notes or why I do not write the answers to these questions. And thirdly, I will be talking to you guys about how I revisit or how, how I revise these questions once I have made them. Now, how do I make or write these questions which I've been talking so much about? The first thing I want you guys to know is that I really like to base my questions around lectures and not textbooks. And there's a reason for that. In the clinical years of med school, and in Oslo that would be from year third onwards, uh, in the clinical years, you really get tested on material which was not in the lecture. And this is because most lectures almost always include the clinical features of a disease, for example, uh, the symptoms, um, diagnostic features of the procedures, and the treatment for that disease. The second thing I want you guys to know is that there are times when I use textbooks as well. And there are normally two reasons for that. The first one being a slimy, disorganized lecture where it is really hard to comprehend what is going on. So I do not want to waste my time scrolling through 60, 70 PowerPoint slides, and I would rather spend my time um, going through a textbook and trying to comprehend or make some sense, uh, sense out of the material. The second reason why I would want to go through a textbook chapter is for a better understanding or a better comprehension of the material which I'm trying to learn. For complex topics such as the ECG, it is highly unlikely that a student like me would understand and comprehend everything simply by attending the lecture. So it is at times like these that I really like to consult my textbooks in order to develop a better understanding and clear out those hard or difficult to understand topics and concepts. So there are three reasons as to why I do not like to take notes or write down the answers to these questions. The first one being saving time. Now I know that the answer to my question is always going to be in the lecture or most likely it's going to be in the lecture. So it's really easy to find and I don't really see the point in taking down notes from the lecture when you have that PowerPoint slide in front of you. Secondly, I also know that the time it's going to take for me to find those answers later on when I'm doing those questions is still going to be much less compared to the time it takes to sit down and write the answers or take notes for all those questions. So really, it's a win-win situation for me. The second reason why I do not write the answers to my questions is that when you actively try to look for the answer to a specific question, you are much more likely to remember it. The process of opening the answer to a specific question, if you have the answer in front of you, is gonna be much more passive because you have the answer, all you need to do is click on and you will get the answer. That's much more passive, guys, and I would like to make my process of learning as active as possible to make it more efficient and also time saving. The last reason for not writing down the answer to these questions is that while testing myself on these questions, I am forced to think more and not give up. Because when you have the answers in front of you, 
you are much more tempted and you are much more likely to just give in and check the answer because the answer is right in front of you. Now that my questions are ready, how do I consistently revisit or revise these questions? One thing that is absolutely critical to this entire system of active recall is consistently testing yourself on these questions. The way I do this is that I always, always, always spend at least 20 minutes trying to revisit the questions that I've already made before I begin with a new topic. As simple as that. But how do I really review my questions? And this is where the color coding system for Active Recall comes in. Now let's say I am revising my questions from coronary disease. So the first time I'm not able to answer any specific question, what I do is that I mark the question or I color that question in red. Now if I'm not able to answer that question the second time I revisit it, I mark the question in red plus bold. If I'm still not able to answer the question after the third time, I mark it in red plus bold plus underlined. And if there's a fourth time I'm not able to answer that question, I mark it with let's say orange, bold and underlined. And you really get to that point guys, because if that happens and I know there is something seriously wrong, and I need to sit down and really figure out what is so hard about this topic. Now let's say there is a question which I was not able to answer the first and the second time. Now that means I marked that question in red plus bold. And let's say when I'm revising that question for the third time, I get that correct or I get that right. Now what I now do is that I start eliminating those color or marking schemes one by one. So the third time I get that answer right, I remove the bold and the only thing we have now left is the red color on that question. The fourth time I revisit my question and I'm able to answer it correctly, I remove the red color so it goes back to black. Let me draw a timeline to demonstrate this better for you guys. Now this is the easy end and this is the hard or the difficult end. The first time I'm not able to answer a question, I mark that in red. The second time I'm not able to answer that question, I mark that in red plus bold. The third time I can't answer that question, I mark that in red plus bold and um, underlined. And the fourth time I'm not able to answer the question, that is when the alarm kicks off because I know there is something seriously wrong and I need to focus a lot more on this question and there is something inherently wrong about this. So I sit down and really focus on that topic and figure out what's so hard about this. But when I start answering these questions correctly, I simply start removing the elements. So I go from red plus bold plus underlined to simply red plus bold and then from red plus bold to red and then from red to blue which is a good sign and from blue back to black and so when i'm back at black i know i have mastered that question and i will remember this, this forever so this is basically how i incorporate active recall and distributed practice into my own regime um i make questions from my lectures and textbooks i do not write the answers and lastly i have this color coding scheme which i use when revisiting these questions. If you have any questions regarding this, then please send me an email or just message me on Instagram or simply comment down below. That's a wrap for today, guys. I hope you found the video useful. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.